Hello, uh, my name is Richard Wingert. I'm a licensed real estate agent in New York City. And today we're gonna be speaking with Stephen Ebert, uh, attorney, a partner with the law firm of Kasson & Kasson LLP, and a well-respected real estate practitioner in New York. Uh, he's also a co-host of the weekly radio talk show, Eye on Real Estate. Uh, in the following segments, we're going to see uh, a bunch of um, questions being answered by Stephen, and I can't thank him enough uh, for giving me his time, and I hope you all enjoy. Feel free to comment and let me know what you think. Hey Stephen, uh, I want to talk about mortgage agreements. Uh, I have a client uh, and they're going into about to purchase a home and they want to know, so what are the terms and what is what do they mean? You know, Buying a home is usually the largest financial transaction for a consumer. And all of a sudden they are flooded with information. They're trying to understand rates, they're trying to understand product, and things are thrown at them. You know, and in fact, one time I remember years ago, I saw a letter from a bank that says, you have our approval and it's just as good as having the cash in your pocket. And that was before the consumer even picked out a property. Well, that letter went way too far and should never have been issued. So what are the things to look for? Number one, the ultimate gold standard of where we're going to is getting what's called a commitment letter. And that's what's referred to in the contract that you're gonna sign as part of the process. And the commitment letter, and don't be fooled by the fact that it says letter, is an actual contract. And the commitment letter is the document that says this particular bank will lend to this particular borrower a certain amount of money to buy this property, but then in the back, subject to these final conditions. And so that's what we're looking to on the legal side. That's the ultimate contract by the bank to lend. You gotta be very, very careful about what are in those conditions to make sure you can fulfill them. But that's the legally binding document from the bank to the consumer. Everything before that, like a pre-approval letter, a pre-qualification letter, they're nice signals, they're helpful, but they're not legally binding. So when talking to your mortgage professional, find out what document you're getting and when, find out what the approval means. Am I credit approved? Meaning you like my credit score? You like my income? You're, you're okay with my liabilities? What are we really talking about? and make sure that you have a real contact at your mortgage company and you, who understands the local market. Getting a loan for $300,000 for a single family house is very different than getting a $2 million loan for a co-op. Because when you're going ahead and trying to get that loan, the lenders are looking at your ability to pay, which are assets, liability, and income. And by the way, don't be fooled, not all income is the same. Salaried income, commissions, bonuses in the discretion of an employer, stock options, they're all different. Very important to understand that. Your willingness to pay, what's your credit history? Do you have credit history, right? For some of our younger first time home buyers, they paid everything with cash. They actually, they might have a low credit score, not because that they're risky, but because the banks don't have a relationship and know them. So make sure that you build and maintain your credit. And the last part is security of the asset. They look at, does the property appraise for value? And if you're buying in a co-op or a condo, are they comfortable with what we call the project? The financial situation of the building and so forth. So these are the key things to look at up front on the, when you're getting that mortgage and making sure that your mortgage person is in touch with your lawyer and your real estate agent to make sure that everything's in alignment.